All right, a couple of things that I do want to write down to everybody, especially the three or four that's new here today. And if you are new, make sure, well, I'm going to call the roll. I know I'm picking up three or four today. Um, I didn't know if I told y'all this, but the uh, my phone number, my cell phone number, let me write my name down so you'll know my name. Some of y'all didn't get the handouts. And my number, my cell number is, okay, that's nice. 864-356-3874. And the help desk for Tri-County Tech. is 864-646-1779. Uh, my email address, for those that just added today, um, I don't know web assigns uh, number by heart. Um, everybody did get web assigned with your book, correct? Or um, uh, did you just come in? I'm thinking about using web assign for the homework. I really don't know what I'm going to do yet. But they really web assign is basically. Um, web assign is basically uh, online. An online tool that comes with your book that you can do homework, tests, and you can do everything online. Yes? Are we going to need to use the book or can we buy like it? It comes with a website online. You can get it online. You can print it out. So we can just like buy the access code mm -hmm. and can we get the book online? Mm -hmm. Yep, you can do, and that's why I say you can bring an old book or you can use a book or share a book or whatever. I really don't care what you bring to class because calculus hasn't changed in oodles of years, so it doesn't matter what you bring to class. Um, so you can do whatever you want to there. I don't know. You'll just have to look up web assigns. I'm going to have to create a class, and I will do that this weekend. I'm not going to do it now because I've got 20 other things I've got to do. Um, so we'll just, we'll just, uh, and I'll do a algebra review homework assignment for everybody, and that way everybody can get that under their belt. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with tests yet because I have to give in class test. I ain't figured that out yet, so we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get there, okay? Any questions? I know who, who's new, I know you three are new. Anybody else? Okay, so um, a lot will help you out when you get the handouts. Okay. Where did we leave off yesterday? Complete the square? Yep. Did we start a new one or? No. We didn't? We just did x squared minus 4x plus 17. All right. Then let's bump it up a notch. You've got you, your, your, uh, let's do 2x. Get believe it. Sorry. 2x squared minus 3x. I don't know where that came from, sorry. Minus 4 is equal to 0. Now, once we get through going through completing the square, then we're going to do rationalizing the denominators. And we'll do some logarithmic um, review. And hopefully by the end of this week, we should, or the end of today, we should have covered pretty much all we need to cover as far as review of algebra.
What's the first thing we do? Move C. I started you off. Now you can finish it. If you can't finish it, just consider yourself a failure and you should quit school. Drop slips are no more. You can do it online. You can just go back to your TCTC account and drop the class and consider yourself a failure. What do we got to do before we can complete the square? Factor out what? Two. A two. Good job. Who was your who was your algebra teacher? Oh yes. Factor out a two. X squared minus three halves x plus blank is equal to four. And what do we have to make sure when we factor out something over here? What do we have to make sure we do? Multiply by this blank. So we need to take our handy dandy highlighter. We factored that 2 out right there. We need to multiply by the blank. Whatever we factor out, we have to multiply by the blank. Now we can complete the square. B divided by 2 and squared. Now I don't care what calculus I'm teaching. I show this step all the way through. Three halves is B, so we'll take our handy dandy highlighter and we'll color it green for day. And here's B. Okay, we're going to take B and we're going to divide it by what? Two. And we're going to square. And I do this. I don't care if I'm teaching differential equations. I, I show this because if y'all going to screw up something, this is where it's going to be. Because you're not used to working with fractions. You're used to using the little idiot box. Okay? So three halves multiplied by one half is equal to three fourths. Squared is what? Nine sixteenths. That's right, class. Thanks for the interaction. Okay, now y'all should be able to finish it. Just come on in whenever you want to. That's fine. So, three new students. When's the last time you had algebra? It's been a while. Two, three years? Yeah. But yeah, about the same. Yeah, yeah you don't have the last year of school. Now, have you had Calc 1 before? We've all went through that too. You have? I took it like, I took Calc 2 like three times. So, don't be shy. You have had it before? How about you? Pre-cal? Been a while? Been a while. Uh, I don't think I've ever had it. Okay. Okay. Just need to know what I'm dealing with. Of course it's not going to do it. Alright, so what does that give you right here? Shortcut number what? That's not a shortcut. Shortcut number two. Good job. You actually read them. So, two times x minus three-fourths quantity squared is equal to, well, let's go ahead and fix this. That two will cancel with this. What, eight? 
So 9 eighths and 32 eighths. Now, those of you that added yesterday, you need to watch the video because I went over the shortcuts. is equal to 41 eighths okay y'all gonna have to write that down because I got to write it on the next page because I can't copy it because it'll copy like the whole page so I don't know how to copy yet I'll try it one more time Hey, now, <laughs> how can I, there we go, now let me try this, oh now we cooking with peanut OIL now, I don't pronounce OIL. I want to know why? Yeah. Yeah. Because there's always some guy or girl in the group that is anti-Southern, ignorant, racist. And when you pronounce O-I-L a certain way, you're an ignorant, racist Southerner. So I do not pronounce O-I-L because I don't want to be considered a, so I just don't pronounce it. Okay? There's two ways to pronounce O-I-L the correct way and the incorrect way. I don't pronounce it because I don't want to get in a fight. Anyway, that's why I don't pronounce F-O-I-L either. There's a story behind it. I'll tell you the story later. Alright, three things, three directions you can go here. One is you can put it in intercept form. F of X is equal to 2 times X minus 3 fourths quantity squared minus 41 eighths. And intercept form is the way that some books and some teachers like for you to write it in intercept, I mean, in the general form. Yeah, put my name tag on it. And I don't care nothing about it, but sometimes you have to write it like that. The vertex is 3 fourths and negative 41 eighths. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and that's because this is your horizontal shift. And the horizontal shift is always going to be the opposite. Now, there is a mathematical there is a mathematical way of writing it. F of X. F of X is equal to A times X minus H quantity squared plus K. You've seen that before? All right, well that minus right there, if you put a minus in there, it becomes a what? A positive, so that's why you use the opposite. But I can show you that and it will confuse you, or I can just tell you to take the opposite. So I don't do it that way. So I just tell you to take the opposite of the horizontal shift. And that, I don't know why that equals there, I don't know. It's Bush's fault. Okay, you're supposed to erase. That's what the little tip's for. I quit. I quit. Well, it's not the board's fault, honestly. It's Bush's fault. Okay, take the opposite of 3 fourths and bring this down. 
Now, if you don't use the intercept method, you just take the opposite of both. And that's the way I tell students. Take the opposite of the three-fourths and take the opposite of the negative, I mean, of the positive 41 eighths, and there's your vertex. Either way, you're going to get the same thing. And that is your vertex. And now over here, we're going to solve for x. So I'm going to divide by 2 over 1. Divide by 2 over 1, which means I'm going to multiply by 1 half. x minus 3 fourths quantity squared is equal to 41 sixteenths. Take the square root of both sides. x minus 3 fourths is equal to positive or negative, the square root of 41 over 4. Well, the square root of 36 is 6. The square root of 49 is 7. 36 and 49, what is that? 13? Somebody help me out. 13, half of 13 is 7 and a, 6 and a half. 6 and a half is 42.5 is 6.5. What do we want? 41, so I say a 6.4. X minus 3 fourths is equal to positive or negative, what I say? 6.4 over 4. And then X is equal to positive or negative 6.4 plus 3 over 4. And what's 6.4 plus 3? 9.4 over 4. 2.3. Somebody help me out. Somebody check me. What's 9.4 divided by 4? Somebody. Okay, forget it. I think it's 2.3. You owe $6.40. You have $3. You owe what? $3.40. Divide that by 4. It's going to be 80 cents, somewhere around there. Somebody be negative, you still owe. Somebody check my math. What is that noise? Oh my gosh! A phone! I'm supposed to have a heart attack. <laughs> what does it come out to? If you don't know what you're doing, don't use your calculator, okay? 2.3, yeah. 2.3 is correct? Of course it is. How about the other one? Negative 3.4 over 4. Huh? I'm not going to do negative on this. The man don't know if he wears How much? 0 0.85. 0 0.85, I'm sorry, I'm 500 tall. Okay, so now sketch it. Sketch your parabola. You got your x intercepts and your y intercept and your vertex. You don't know what to do, just chalk it up as being a loser.
Okay, y'all gonna have to remind me what everything is because I gotta go to the next page. So we take our handy dandy, I could insert a grid, but we're sketching, so it doesn't matter. All right, what's my vertex? Three fourths. Three fourths. And negative 41 eighths. Negative 41 eighths. Well, that's what, negative five and one eighth is negative five. So three fourths, dang old one, there's three fourths. And negative five and one eighth. One, two, three, four, five. This thing don't draw a dot very well. It's not my fault. What's my y-intercept? What was the original problem? Huh? Negative four. Negative four. One, two, three, four. And point negative point eight five. And what was the other one? One, two, three, four, three point four. Does everything line up? Pretty much. There's your graph. Now on a scale from one to ten, you just did a about a four or a five as far as difficulty. But the good thing about complete the square is it just about has everything in it. This problem that we just did has graphing, it has algebra, it has factoring, it has multiplication, it has everything in it except for rationalizing the denominator, in which we could do that. Yeah, we could do that. So that's why a lot of calculus teachers do complete the square problems in a review because it has everything in it. Okay. You feel pretty discouraged right now? Good. I'm doing my job. All right. So let's do a nerd. You want an easy one again? Huh? You don't want an easy one? Let's do an easy one. Let's just do one easy one. X squared minus... Um, 6x plus or minus 4 is equal to zero. You have input email. Okay. All right, what's half of six? Did y'all check that on the calculator? Yes. One time I was doing a 
complete the square, and I put six right here. Three to the second power is six. Took me took me half the class to figure out why I couldn't get the parameter to come out right because of that. I do that just to make students feel good. Make mistakes on purpose. And then act like I can't find it. All right. X minus 3. Quantity squared is equal to 13. And at that point, you can do your f of x is equal to x minus 3. Quantity squared minus 13. Your vertex is 3, comma, negative 13. Or you can just take the opposite of both. And go over here and solve. Square root of 13, square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 9 is 3. 3.5 is in the middle. 9 to 16 is 7. Half of 7 is what? 3 and a half? So that's square root of 12.5. I don't believe it's 3.6. And 3.6 plus 3 is 6.6. .6. And negative 3.6 plus 3 is negative 0.6. Now the reason I gave you an easy one is because we want to step it up a notch and put a negative in there. That's why I gave you an easy one to make you feel good about yourself right before I kick you while you're down. Good? Okay, y'all not gonna talk to me anymore. Negative x squared. Minus 3x plus 4 is equal to 0. What are you going to do first? Move C. You always move C first. So you piano players, just remember C. Middle C. Move C. Negative x squared minus 3x plus blank is equal to 4, I'm sorry, negative 4 plus blank. <coughs> now what? Factor out of negative. Factor out of negative what? 
and whatever we factor out, we always multiply by that blank. A lot of people say, well, why don't you do it by this blank? Okay, what is this blank? Zero. What's zero times negative one? All right, so now we can three divided by two and square it, we get nine fourths. Shortcut number one. equals negative four minus nine fourths. We'll change that negative four into 36 fourths, right? No, 16 fourths, thank you. Negative 1, x plus 3 halves, quantity squared, is equal to negative 25 fourths. Do we have x-intercepts? Huh? Yes, we do. Is the, negative on the, other side? the negative on the other side will make the negative on the right side what? Positive. You got to be careful. The only time we have no x-intercepts is when this is negative and there's nothing else over here to change it. But that negative 1, when you divide and solve for x, that negative 1 is going to make this what? Positive. And you will have x-intercepts. So go ahead and finish it out. Yes, sir. Oh, shortcut. Shortcut number one. Take the square root of this. Take the square root of this. Okay, that's it. That's it. Where did you get that t-shirt? My son and I watch all the Jaws movies. He loves Jaws. I think I like Coles. I have to get him one. We record it and watch it over and over and over. We got about 10 or 11 movies that we record on DVD, I mean on uh, whatever it's called, direct. And uh, that's, he comes over today and we're going to 